I don't know if you recall, but I was invited to this LG event. They were launching a G7 Plus ThinQ smartphone. It was new, it was shiny, there were disco lights, dancing girls, loud music, and I came away super, super impressed with the smartphone. This retails for 1,198 Singapore dollars, which is pretty much on the premium end of things. But now that I've had the chance to try it for a few weeks, I'm coming back to you for a more measured response. And if you want to see my video introducing the LG G7 ThinQ smartphone, you can click right over here. But first, let's go through some of its specs. So here we're looking at a 6.1 inch Quad HD Plus display, a Snapdragon 845 chip, so you get better processing power for games, Android 8.0 Oreo, 4GB of RAM, 64GB of storage, and you can expand that further by 256GB using its micro SD card slots. Screen to body ratio of 83%, so it's not bezel-less, you've got a notch, you've got a chin, but it still looks pretty damn good. Oh, and I also got to mention that this does not use an OLED display, but rather it uses an IPS LCD display. But its screen resolution is a whopping 563 ppi, which is higher than the iPhone 10. You get Corning Gorilla Glass on the front and back, so it feels really good in my hands. Very substantial, in fact, a little bit of weight there. Very nice. You've got volume rocker buttons on the left side, along with a dedicated button for Google Assistant and Google Lens. On top is where you'll find your SD card slot and right beside it is the microphone for noise cancelling. Right at the bottom, you've got a 3.5mm jack so you can plug in your headphones. It's got a microphone, a USB-C, charging port for fast charging, and the speaker. At the back, you've got a flash, a light sensor, a dual camera setup. One of them is a super wide-angle lens, 107 degrees. And I can see this coming in real handy in some situations like if you want to take a group shot, big group, normally you have to back up like 10 steps till you're right against the wall. But now just 5 steps will do, you're comfortable, you're taking your shot, BAM! It's there. And lastly, you've got a fingerprint sensor which comes in real handy. In fact, with this phone, I use the fingerprint sensor a lot more because somehow I find it faster than the facial recognition unlock here. Let me show you. BAM. Simple. Okay, battery life. Now I've had no problems with this battery life. This has got good battery life. I'm playing games on it, watching videos, and it still managed to last me the entire day. And when I need to charge it, it takes barely an hour because it's got this USB-C charging port, fast charging. So yeah, as far as the battery goes, no problems there. Now I like the fact that they've got Google Lens on a dedicated button. What I don't like is Google Lens. I think Google Lens still has some way to go. Like, what it's supposed to do is when you activate Google Lens, you could point your camera at stuff that interests you and it will uh, give you information about it and even tell you where to buy it. So that was what I was thinking. It didn't quite do that for me for most of the things that I pointed at. The one thing that you could do pretty well is to translate text. So you could have something in a foreign language, you point your camera at it and it translates for you. So I think that did it, that it did pretty well. But other than that, I think Google Lens is still a work in progress pretty much. <laughs> Now, let's talk about some of the things that I really like about this phone, okay? Even though the dual rear cameras are 16 megapixels each, they take really good pictures. Like, I was snapping pictures with it in dimly lit conditions, and the pictures that came out, wow, they look pretty well lit, they look, uh, they didn't look overprocessed. the colors looked pretty natural. Like with the Oppo R15 Pro that I reviewed in this video, by the way, it has 20 megapixel cameras, but the pictures that came out looked pretty overprocessed. and when you blow it up, it just feels or rather looks like a painting. I think I said that in the video. But with the G7, you could see some processing there, but it didn't look overprocessed. This has got some pretty cool photography modes, like manual mode, of course. You can adjust your shutter speed, your exposure settings. Uh, you can even do manual focus on this. And this even has got focus peaking. Of course, your standard panorama and your slow motion mode shooting at 120 frames per second. And cine video, which uh, by default gives you a more cinematic feel to your videos. But the mode that I really enjoy the most is AR stickers. Of course, AR means augmented reality. So you could drop cartoons into the middle of your living room and then film it, which is pretty cool like what I did in this video. And of 
course, when you're taking a selfie, you can adjust how smooth your skin looks. But I love taking pictures with this phone because any phone that can make me look 10 times better is a good phone, okay? And this phone also has portrait mode which allows you to bring your subject into a sharper focus while softening the background. And you can even do this after you've taken a picture, which is super, super cool. One feature that I feel they oversold a little bit too much, and by they, I mean LG, of course, is AI Cam. So if you're using the AI Cam feature, in theory, the phone will help you to analyze the picture that you're about to take, identify aspects of the photo which can be better lit, and then light it up properly. Even if I ignore the fact that it does not identify my subject correctly, most of the time, the pictures that I take using AI mode just isn't lighted up well enough, like in this case. I was taking a picture with the sun behind the subject. So yes, in the last video I did about this phone, I know I was raving about the AI camera, but you know, I'm a victim too! And I apologize, I should have been more careful with my conclusions back then. But hey, that's why you're here. Like me, you're concerned about the truth. So if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to this channel if you want more honesty in your life. This phone also has a powerful video camera. It shoots in 4K 60 frames or 1080p at 30 frames. But right now, I prefer shooting videos at 30 frames per second 1080p. And this is the result I got when I was shooting video while visiting a vendor. This phone also has some special features related to sound like DTS-X, sound processing, uh, it's got a Quad HD amplifier, a boombox speaker, but first I want to talk about its DTS-X sound processing because damn, that is an awesome feature. Now for those of you who don't know, DTS-X basically turns your stereo sound recording into 5 channel or 7 channel surround sound. So when I'm watching videos with a pair of headphones, my videos end up sounding a lot more like cinematic movies. Of course, you've got to be wearing headphones for DTS-X to work. But to me, the single best use of DTS-X is for gaming. And I'm not kidding. Owning those kids on PUBG felt a little bit like cheating because one, I was wearing headphones. Number two, I was having DTS-X switched on. I knew exactly where they were in my, vis in my immediate vicinity. So if someone's coming up from behind me, I can just turn around and shoot him. And I ended up owning everybody as a result. And I was either in first place or second place. Perhaps part of the reason is because I'm a seasoned gamer. I play Battlefield 1, Call of Duty. So PUBG to me is like, you know, it came across as pretty easy, even with the mobile controls. But without a shadow of a doubt, DTSX is one of the reasons why I own so much at PUBG. If you're an audiophile, the Quad Hi-Fi deck is one of the main reasons you should be getting this phone because it did make my music sound a lot cleaner a lot better defined, a lot more detailed even. But the thing is, you have to plug in actual wired headphones to enjoy that. Uh, and you have to deactivate DTS-X for it to work. This innocent looking speaker here is called a boombox speaker. Okay, what is boombox? So it basically uses the cavity empty spaces within the phone to amplify sound, make it sound louder, and make it sound a lot fuller than your typical uh, phone speaker. Let me show you how it works, okay? I'm just gonna play a video. I don't want this video to get a copyright strike, so I'm gonna play one of my own videos, okay? Well, Let's make sure it's maximum it volume. We are going to open okay. this big boy up, and we're gonna test its bass. Yes, it's all about the bass, always has been. Let's go. It's quite loud, but when I put it on this table, A little bit more low end there. It also sounds maybe a little bit louder, like 5 to 10% louder. But to me, this feature is more useful if you're just listening to music. Because when I'm watching videos, I don't want to be doing this. I would prefer to hold it out of my hand. 
So at least to me, Boombox is useful if I'm listening to music only and not so much for watching videos. In fact, let's try something. Okay, got an empty clear cup and I'm gonna see if this makes any difference whatsoever. Hmm. Ah. I thought by using the cup I could amplify the sound but it ended up making the sound a lot sound a lot more hollow you know so I still prefer the phone against the table. The G7 Plus ThinQ retails for 1198 Singapore dollars. Overall I think this is a great phone for the price. Aesthetically it's not the best looking guy but it's got more than a few tricks up its sleeve. Its screen is super sharp, can get super bright if you need it to, takes great pictures, and has some pretty interesting picture modes. Has a great processor for gaming, great battery life, charges up really fast. It also has features that emphasize great sound quality, which I appreciate really because after all this channel, anything with great sound has a special place on this channel. Speakers, headphones, and now smartphones. So yes, even though LG overpromised a little, with its AI features such as with AI camera and Google Lens, I still feel that this is a great smartphone to consider should you be shopping around for something in the premium bracket. Do not underestimate the LG G7 Plus. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, my name is Aaron and if you think this video is useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell to join my notification squad because I upload videos every single week and that is the only way you'll get notified. And if you think I'm doing a great job with these videos, you can treat me to a cup of coffee through PayPal or Patreon. Links are in the description and I'll thank you in advance for your contributions. Once again, my name is Aaron and you're watching Aaron is Online Wireless. I'll see you in the next video. Face palm. Ouch.